The MacBook Pro 16 is a benchmark laptop. It's, I mean, it's legitimately fantastic, and it deserves all of the praise that is normally laid upon it. It's powerful, quiet, and the base model packs some serious punch for the price, which isn't something that normally can be said about Apple products with, you know, the Apple tax. However, though, the Razer Blade 15, specifically this base model that I've got right here, is fantastic. Like, legitimately, one of the best laptops that I've ever used. It packs serious horsepower for not that much money. This model costs less than even the MacBook Pro 16. So how do these stack up against each other and which should you get? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of both Windows and Mac, and I use both of them right now today on this channel. I currently am using a custom-built PC, which I'm quite darn proud about and we will talk about in the next video. I use that for my video editing rig, but I use Mac for literally everything else, which is why, so that's my way of trying to say that I'm not biased against either of these and I'm not biased for either of these, I use both. So let's start off with the price to performance comparison between the MacBook and the Razer. The MacBook Pro 16 at its base model can be had for $2,399, though you can find it consistently on sale on either sites like Amazon, or you can even find it refurbished on the Apple website for around $2,000. At that price point, you get a 6-core, 9th generation Intel i7 processor, a Radeon Pro 5300 with 4GB of memory, 16GB of RAM, and a 512GB solid-state drive. For two grand, that's pretty good. However, if, if you're feeling froggy, you could also spec the MacBook Pro 16 all the way up to an 8-core 9th generation Intel i9, 64 gigabytes of RAM, a brand new Radeon Pro 5600, and a staggering 8 terabyte solid state drive. Those beefy specs don't come cheap, and that machine will run you over $6,000, which dang, that custom PC we just talked about costs like a fourth of that. The Razer Blade 15 from 2020 does have two separate models, but today we'll be covering the base model because that's what I have, and it's actually called the base model. It's not just something that I'm calling it. They actually, it's called the Razer Blade base. I don't know why. This model comes equipped with a 6-core, 10th generation Intel i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, an NVIDIA RTX 2060 graphics card, and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. And, we'll talk more about this in a little bit, but a 144 hertz 1080p display. Unlike the MacBook, it's different. Buying the Razer is different than buying the Mac. You can't really upgrade these components in the same way that you can on the Mac, but there are a couple of different base models to pick from that will give you either a 4K 60Hz panel or an RTX 2070 graphics card. Physically, the two computers do take a very different design approach. The MacBook Pro 16 is very aluminum-y. Aluminum it's a very, it's got a lot of aluminum. Much like everything else in the Apple computer lineup, it's incredible. The build quality on this computer is incredible and might be just one of the sleekest, most professional looking laptops ever made. Though, sometimes professional means boring, and I do wish Apple would do a little something to spice up and update the look of their laptop line. They look fine, they also look kind of boring. It's got four Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. That's kind of, it's kind of slim pickings there for I.O. Don't get me wrong, I'm a gigantic fan of Thunderbolt 3's versatility, but that's all you're gonna get. The Razer is a whole lot more gamer at its core. You can't really tell here because I had to de-gamer it to make it a little more professional, and I, I bought a D-brand skin to put on top of this, so it, it looks a little less RGB. This also has fantastic build quality, and it looks so good with its matte black finish. However, as good as this looks, that look will only last as long as your fingerprints will because this might be the most fingerprint smudge vulnerable device I've ever seen. Even the XPS line from Dell that looks like it should have these problems, it doesn't have it in the same way that the Razer Blade does. Dang, maybe we should make a Razer Blade 15 versus the XPS 15 video. Leave a comment below if you want to see that. When it comes to I.O. here, however, Razer definitely has the edge over the MacBook. But this I.O. gives you way more functionality built into the body of the laptop, and you get much more out of it than you do on the Mac. When it comes to battery and battery life, the Razer Blade has a 65 watt hour battery stacked against the ridiculous 99 point, as close as they could get to 100 as possible watt hour battery. This is as close as you can get and still get it on an airplane. One of the things I do want to mention about battery life is Mac, one of the benefits of Mac is when this is not plugged into the wall, you get full power. Windows, 
you can set it to like different levels but as, it, as your battery reaches certain points, the system will start limiting its power. That is a big benefit that MacBook has. When it comes to the displays, it's kind of a mixed bag where each one is better in different ways than the other. The MacBook Pro 16 has Apple's fantastic retina panel. These are super sharp, crisp, other thesaurus words meaning clear. It's about as color accurate as a laptop display will ever get and it's 3072 by 1920 resolution is awesome all of that and it can come with a refresh rate of up to 60 hertz that you can set based on what you want the display to do and as far as apple computers go this has much slimmer bezels than any of the other apple laptops and much slimmer than the previous 15 inch version giving you a little bit more screen real estate without needing the laptop body to be all that much bigger the razor blade base model that i have does have a lower resolution display like we said in the intro of 1920 by 1080 however it is also 100 percent srgb calibrated but the big bonus here is that much higher 144 hertz refresh rate. Here's the problem I'm gonna have with this though. I can tell you that number and I can say that the Razer's got this high refresh rate, but you're not actually gonna be able to see it in this video because this video is being shot in 30 frames per second. So physically, you will not be able to see what I'm talking about. That I'm saying that to say that the refresh rate is super, super noticeable. And I'm not normally one to talk about refresh rates, but I would say the better and faster refresh rate on the Razer is way more striking than the resolution difference between these two monitors. I've never actually had a high refresh display before, and it's gonna, it's hard. Like going from this to going to my normal editing monitor, which has a 60 Hertz refresh rate, it's a struggle because it feels like something is wrong. It's just like everything's off a little bit. It seems like everything is so much choppier. High refresh is actually really good, and I never thought I would say that. The biggest difference, like you won't notice the resolution, you will absolutely notice the refresh rate. Next up in the comparison, both laptops enter the everyday dad's wheelhouse, typing. This is the crucible that all computers must go through if they want my seal of approval. Typing, that's where things get real. The MacBook Pro 16 has Apple's new magic keyboard, abandoning the much mushier and misaligned butterfly keyboard. These keys are crisp, can you hear them? They're crisp, they're accurate, and they're refreshing to type on. I've spent hours typing on this device and I've never had a single issue. The only complaint, and I mean very small complaint I would have with this keyboard, is it might be just a tad too big, leading me to need to like reach for a few keys. But that's a very, very minor issue. The Razer Blade 15's keyboard is okay. It's okay. The keys are fine, they work, can you hear it? They sound similar to the MacBook, but they do feel they're a little mushier and the typing experience is kind of meh here. Like, I mean, it's functional, but it's not gonna be a huge selling point of the computer in my opinion. Right below the keyboards, the story is much the same. The MacBook has a trackpad that's almost the size of my iPad. Look at this thing, do you see that? That is about the size of an iPad mini. And it, whoa. And it's so accurate, you really don't need a mouse when you travel with this MacBook. It's so good. The Razer trackpad is much like its keyboard. It's there and it's totally functional, but I have actually had a few palm rejection issues where the trackpad will move the mouse cursor if my palm touches the pad from time to time. And dang, the hits keep coming on in much the same way when we talk about things next to the keyboard. Both laptops do, can you see this? They do both have top firing speakers next to their keyboard. This is really like, the current design philosophy of all laptops. Like, you see this? Here's the speakers. The Apple has class leading. The Apple MacBook Pro 16 has the best speakers that you are going to buy, period. It's not even close. It's not even close. They sound fantastic, and they are so good that if you're using this as your only computer, you don't really need to buy external speakers. They're, I can't say enough good things about the speakers on the MacBook Pro 16. The Razer, again, much like the rest of the keyboard body, has totally functional speakers. I don't have the same popping and hissing issues that I had on the XPS 17 when gaming, which is good, but again, these are, they're adequate. They're adequate. I wish the top body of this laptop had more going for it. It also gets a lot of smudges though, which I put another skin on this, and even that skin shows smudges. Before we leave the physical design of the two laptops, I wanna make one additional note on the Razer. Inside this laptop, like if you take out this bottom panel, you do have the ability to upgrade the RAM, the SSD, and the Wi-Fi card. So while this is that base model with the RTX 2060, I actually put 64 gigabytes of RAM and an extra one terabyte solid state drive, and that cost me 
way less to buy it and do it myself than it would have been to upgrade a MacBook to an additional what? An additional one terabyte and 64 gigabytes of RAM. Like it took just a few minutes to swap out and we're ready to go. Next, let's talk about performance. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with specs or benchmarks because with all the variants in processors, RAM loadouts, graphics cards, any numbers that I put up against these two, they don't really matter. What I will say is the MacBook Pro runs at full power and I've never once had a thermal problem with it even though it's rocking an incredibly beefy and hot running Intel i9. That chip, that Intel i9, the ninth generation one, causes other laptops in this size and class to definitely have thermal problems. But the MacBook Pro 16 has a fantastic fan and thermal system. I've never had an issue. I've never once had a throttling issue during video rendering or doing other graphics and CPU intense tasks. The Razer Blade 15 has also never given me a single problem when it comes to thermals with its six core i7. But it's a little more complicated here. Yes, I think the fans and the thermals inside of the laptop are perfectly fine to handle that i7 without much issue. However, what I've seen during video rendering and other tests is the processor is actually undervolted. The BIOS is limiting the power sent to the processor. So you aren't really getting all of the power that you're paying for. Now that's gonna be a personal decision for you if that's gonna bother you. It doesn't, I don't have an issue with it because I'd much rather the power of the processor be limited a little bit to keep the CPU from overheating then have it overheat and limit itself that way. There are a few options inside of Razer software that will let you give a little more power to the CPU, 45 watts as opposed to 35 watts, or you can take that power and give it to the graphics card. And I still have had no thermal issues. The real power and performance difference that I wanna bring up comes from the graphics card. The AMD card in the MacBook is okay. Any of the options will handle 4K video editing, transcoding, and anything the Mac OS would throw at you, the Radeon 5000 series will be able to handle. Plus it also gets some help, like we've mentioned previously, with the T2 security chip and its transcoding feature. The Nvidia card in the Razer, however, is of the newer Turing generation. And that will also do everything that a Windows laptop would need, but it has NVIDIA's NVENC encoder technology, which if you are a live streamer, video editor, etc., this will blow your mind. NVENC by itself is incredible. It takes my video renders in DaVinci from a little slower than real time using the software encoder, which is roughly the speeds that I get when I do my MacBook renders, to lightning fast. And I don't mean that in a hyperbolic sense either. The Razer Blade rendered my iPad apps video, which was a 15 minute video with 4K raw files color grades and other adjustments in seven minutes and 46 seconds. I mean, that's, look, I spend a lot of my time, a lot of my time waiting for videos to render and being able to cut that time in half, like what? And being able to do that in a less expensive laptop, again, what? Look, Nvidia has done something incredible and the biggest weakness for MacBooks and in fact all of Apple's computers for me is they aren't using Nvidia cards. Hopefully the new ARM, the new Apple silicon chips will have some mind boggling encoding technology inside of them which looking at the iPad Pros for example does make me really excited. However, that's the future. We don't know when these devices are coming out and we don't know what devices are going to come out first. And gaming? Well, we'll charitably say that gaming on the MacBook is certainly possible in certain circumstances, but not something that I would recommend or something that I would do. Go with the Razer for gaming. That's a definitive statement that I can very easily make. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Which of these two laptops comes out on top? If you do a lot of video work, a lot of photo work, or you're moving large files around through a cloud, like uploading YouTube videos, the Razer Blade just wins. The Ethernet port, Turing NVIDIA card, upgradability, everything makes the Razer something amazing. And you can get all of that at a much lower price point than the MacBook Pro. I'm legitimately, legitimately shocked at how much I like this. But that's not to say the MacBook is no slouch either. This is absolutely, like we said in the top of the video, this is one of the best laptops ever made. And if you are all in on certain Apple Pro apps, Final Cut Pro X, Logic, etc., then obviously you'll need to stick with it and you won't be limited in power in any way, shape or form. This rivals desktop computers for the power that's on hand. Personally, if we're gonna talk about what Gary's gonna do, I've been using the Razer for the past couple of weeks. I have no desire to use my MacBook right now. I spent a few days and taught myself a new video editing program and now I'm all in Windows for video editing. But I typed this script on an iPad and I manage my business with an iPad and I do literally everything else Apple, so Apple will continue to dominate everything for me except video editing. 
marketing. And if you liked this video and you are skeptical, you're like Gary, I don't necessarily believe that the Razer Blade 15 is that crazy powerful for video editing. Well, I've got a video saying just that and you can click, click right here on the Razer. Click right here on the Razer to find that video. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.